praise your maker. Come, all you people. Come and praise your maker. Come, all you people. Come and praise your maker. Come now and worship the Lord. Come and praise your maker. Come, all you, come all you people. Come and praise your maker. Come, all you people. Come and praise your maker. Come, all you people. Come and praise your maker. Come, all you people. Come and praise your maker. Come and praise, come and praise your maker. Come now and worship the Lord. Tina Martin, what he says, 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 Good morning and welcome once more to our online worship today. We're delighted to be sharing again with our friends in Kilmarnock South and also with friends from right across the world, from Spain to the USA to Australia. Wherever you are, we hope that you feel at home and feel part of the family of the church today as we worship together. And now my friend Taylor has his own word of welcome. Hello and welcome from Kilmarnock South Parish Church. We are delighted to be sharing in the service this morning with St Andrews and St Marnock's Parish Church and I'm delighted to work alongside my colleague and friend the Reverend Jim McNaughton.
let us pray. Lord, your presence humbles us, your grace lifts us, your mercy challenges us, and your truth inspires us. Your spirit enables us, and your love amazes us. We come to worship you with thankful hearts. We come knowing that you accept us as we are, not because we deserve it or because we are worthy, but because of your unconditional love for us. We come to confess your glory. We come because you call us. We come because we are your people. Lord, you granted us freedom and responsibility, but we allow ourselves to be controlled by the ideas of others. Our lives become fixated on wants and not needs. Too often we let life simply drift by. Father, give us the strength, determination and courage to stand for what we know is real, what we know is true and of you. Enable us to live boldly, daring to love and be loved, knowing that we are your sons and daughters, cleansed and renewed by Christ. And now let us all say together the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not unto temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are marching in the light of God. 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 A reading from the Old Testament comes from the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 22 and we read from verse 1. Some time later, God tested Abraham. He called to him, Abraham, and Abraham answered, Yes, here I am. Take your son, God said, your only son Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah. There on a mountain that I will show you, you offer him as a sacrifice to me. Early the next morning, Abraham cut some wood for the sacrifice loaded his donkey and took Isaac and two servants with him. They started out for the place that God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham 
saw the place in the distance. Then he said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there and worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham made Isaac carry the wood for the sacrifice, and he himself carried a knife and live coals for starting the fire. As they walked along together, Isaac said, Father, he answered, Yes, my son. Isaac asked, I see that you have the coals and the wood, but where is the lamb for the sacrifice? Abraham answered, God himself will provide one. And the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place which God had told him about, Abraham built an altar and arranged the wood on it. He tied up his son and placed him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he picked up a knife to kill him. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. He answered, Yes, here I am. Don't hurt the boy or do anything to him, he said. Now I know that you honour and obey God, because you have not kept back your only son from me. Abraham looked round and saw a ram caught in a bush by its horns. He went and got it and offered it as a burnt offering instead of his son. Abraham named that place the Lord provides. And even today people say, on the Lord's mountain, he provides. Amen. In a world where people walk in darkness, let us turn our faces to the light, to the light of God revealed in Jesus, to the day star scattering a night, for the light is stronger than the shadows linger all around us. Let us turn our faces to the light. Let us light a candle in the darkness. In the face of death a sign of a sign of peace in place of strife, for the light is stronger than the darkness, and the day will overcome the night, though the shadows linger all around us, let us turn our to the light.
Like the summer breezes playing, like the tall trees softly swaying, like the lips of silent praying, is the perfect peace of God. Like the morning sun ascended, like the scents of evening blended, like a friendship never ended, is the perfect peace of God. We turn now to Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter 10, and reading from verse 40. Listen for the word of God. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes God's messenger, because he is God's messenger, will share in his reward. And whoever welcomes a good man, because he is good, will share. In his reward. You can be sure that whoever gives even a drink of cold water to one of the least of these my followers, because he is my follower, will certainly receive a reward. Amen and thanks be to God for these readings from his holy word. Be still. Let's pray together. Father God, we lift up all those who are facing illness today. We ask that you would bring healing, comfort and peace to their bodies. Calm their fears and let them experience the healing power of your love. We pray for those in our own church family and community in need of prayer at this time. take this time to pray for folks known to us. We take this time to pray for the many situations known to us. Loving Lord, as time goes by, we know there are more and more folks really struggling during this pandemic. Folks who are really isolated. Folks who are struggling financially and wondering how they're going to feed their family. Some struggling with anxiety or mental health issues. Businesses worrying about the future, when they may open, and how they need to prepare for their opening. We pray for folks afraid to go out, for medical staff afraid we may have a second peak. Lord, would you bring peace and reassurance in all these circumstances? We pray for all those known to us who are grieving at this time, many unable to properly say goodbye, and many unable to grieve together as a family due to the current situation. Loving Lord, would you grant them your peace and surround them with your love? We take this time to give thanks for answered prayer. We name them before you now. We pray for energy and strength for those trying to plan to bring their church buildings to life after this time of closure. We pray for those who are coming out of these months of lockdown in sorrow and sadness after losing someone dear to them. We pray for those who are left struggling with health problems as life gradually returns to some sense of normality for others. We pray for those who feel the future, afraid to live life again as it was before, going to school, to shops, to work, being with friends. We pray for those affected by racism, and violence in every corner of the world.
Heavenly Father, you bring all these our prayers before you now, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. I'm sure that like me, and indeed all Scottish households, you'll have received a letter, an envelope from the Scottish Government these past few days. A general letter, not addressed, but delivered, containing that letter from the First Minister, coupled that with a leaflet, a leaflet entitled Test and Protect. Within that leaflet are guidelines and helpful information so that we can help and protect ourselves, our loved ones and indeed the community. It all offers good sound advice. It relates to situations where we may well have come into contact with someone who may have had the virus or have the virus. It tells us what to do. It tells us what will happen through the test and protect programme. It goes on to relate that you may well be contacted and asked to self-isolate for a period of time and go and be tested if, if you develop symptoms yourself. And within that, it also offers ideas of planning if you needed to do the self-isolation. You may wish to consider things like telling someone so that they know that you won't be out and about to the supermarket or to the local shop. Organise your shopping. Organise someone or some company to deliver shopping. Make sure your medicines are in the cupboard and you have enough of them. A whole lot of very useful information packed into just a small leaflet. Small yet with a great deal of knowledge and expertise behind it. And thanks be that there is in these difficult times. It will come as a comfort to some to read that the ongoing government is continuing to care and offer good sound advice. That will be a comfort that someone's thinking just of you. It possibly is an alarm, a wake-up call for others who may well never have thought of the ongoing consequences of the pandemic. Our reading from the book of Genesis this week is what I would call an alarming one. I am quite uncomfortable at the mere thought of just what Abraham was being asked to do by the Lord, and more so over just what he, Abraham that is, was prepared to do. Abraham was really tested, and he held firm in purpose, a purpose of being faithful and remaining faithful, yes, in what we would all consider these days a quite awful way. Yet there they were different times, and matters of the past can only inform us, inform us of the way forward. Like the cries around the country, and indeed around the world at the moment, to reopen the economy, reopen businesses, restaurants, sports venues, and yes, churches. We must look to the future, yes. We must have regard of what has happened in our recent past, though. These past three months, these past three months will surely have challenged and changed us all in some way. And we must garner ourselves and gather all this experience, information, expertise to move forward to a brighter and better future. Abraham, he was indeed tested by God and he held true. We may have a way to go yet to welcome folks back to normality, indeed to get back to what they call the new normal these days. 
Yet the rewards of all this will become clear as we do so. Jesus clearly spells out those rewards in the gospel. When we welcome each other, we welcome God and find in him a welcome more glowing, more pressing on from our dark past to that bright and better future. Our faith can be firm through any testing when our faith is rooted, when our hearts are open to the good news of Jesus coming for us, that he walks with us and we indeed walk with the Lord. Amen.
you can now make a donation to any Church of Scotland congregation online. To do so, open an internet window in any internet-enabled device, visit www.churchofscotland.org.uk forward slash donate. Scroll down and select Donate to a Congregation and begin to type the congregation's name in the white box. Please note congregations are normally listed by town or village. Once you've selected the congregation you wish to give to, complete your name and address in the gift aid form if you are a UK taxpayer. This allows the congregation to claim your donation against the gift aid scheme and get an extra 25 pence for every pound that you give. If you are not a UK taxpayer then select No. Press the red button to donate. You'll be taken to a PayPal site, but don't worry, you don't need an account to give. Simply enter the amount you wish to donate. If you wish to make it a regular monthly donation, check the box. Press donate button if you have a PayPal account already, or donate with card if you don't. You will then be taken to a page and guided through completing your offering using a credit or debit card. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for the consideration of making a gift to your local congregation. The money that you give will be used to aid the church's work in the community and beyond. Thank you for your generosity. God bless.